bare shelves, and empty wall slates. This isn't the way a museum should look just weeks before peak season. Instead of getting ready for the biggest three weeks of the year, Fort Whoop Up is taking items down and packing up artifacts. For the second year in a row, there will be no Canada Day. Canada Day marks the beginning of the Stampede Week rush for us. And, uh, you know, those are the, the three weeks following Canada Day are your busiest days of the year. Those are your greatest days for grass sales, and they're gone again. The historic site's flood plan kicked into action Tuesday afternoon when they received word from the city to be prepared to evacuate. So we carefully pack everything up. We get anything out of here that's going to be affected by heavy humidity. Unfortunately, taking everything apart because of a flood threat is all it takes to devastate their summer season. This is, um, this is another year where I don't know what we're going to do now. We just, we can't. I mean, we have just taken so many hits financially that it's just going to, uh, this will stretch us to the limits. Behind me are the tall walls of the Fort Whoop Up Interpretive Center. It is a historic site that is no stranger to this evacuation. They are now actually in their third year. They just recently got restored from the 2012 and 2013 evacuation. 45,000 items in there need to be removed and it's not an easy task. You know, we were doing finishing touches a month ago from last year, and that's the way it's been every year. And now it's gonna start all over again. Instead of on display, these bearskins once again preparing to hibernate. Not willing to take their chances with valuable artifacts that are hundreds of years old, each and every one of the 45,000 items need to be taken down. But the hard part is putting them back together. To put it all back together, you work with fewer volunteers and staff, no more than about 10 at a time. And for every hour that you've spent taking something apart, it now takes two to three hours to put it back together. So it's going to take a while. And while that's happening, we've got no revenue. Volunteers were ready to spring into action at a moment's notice and worked late into the night on Tuesday. I just heard on Facebook that they needed help, so I came down. Uh, we totally empathize. If, if this was happening to our organization, we'd need all the help that we can get and, and kind of as things continue to, to change with government funding, we all have less staff, we kind of have to team together to help each other get through things like this. It's unfortunate that we're doing this again after, uh, after all the hard work that was put into restoring this after last year. Um, the evacuation takes a lot of work. I can only imagine how much work it takes to set it all back up again and here we are. We've exhausted all of our resources. So, um, you know, now it's going to take time and money to put this stuff all together. You know, it just uh, makes the red ink a little redder. For Go Southern Alberta, I'm Jeanette Roche.